Summer is in full bloom outside my studio. You can see it. There's a latris, flocks, all kinds of flowers. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. Here I teach watercolor, drawing, all kinds of different things and how to, you know, have your creative self come out. <laughs> so today I'm going around my yard looking at the blooms that we have just growing crazily everywhere. You can see the bees just love this particular flower going right after that. And i um, just going to pick a bouquet and talk about how I would go about painting and drawing the bouquet that I pick from the flowers in my yard. I'm sure you have some of these flowers in your yard, daisies and uh, daylilies and uh, coneflowers and black-eyed Susans and all that good stuff. So I'm going to show you quickly how I would draw a vase full of flowers and then paint it in watercolor and how I would go about starting something like that. Also check out my Patreon. I have ad free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials on Thursday, much longer than YouTube. Um, a live stream in the top tier. I give you reference photos, all that good stuff. We have a Facebook page. You get first dibs and retreats and watercolor workshops. Um, you can click the link in the description box to find out how to join Patreon and all that good stuff. But here I'm going to teach you how I take these flowers and transform them into a wonderful bouquet and paint them. I mean, just look how pretty this vibrant purples, pinky colors are. I love them so much. So I decided to cut them, transform them into this beautiful bouquet you see here with daisies, coneflowers, and flocks, and one black-eyed Susan in there. <laughs> and we're going to transform this by drawing it out, dissecting it, and painting it, and turning it into this. So let's get started. So from the flowers you see in my yard, I took a photograph after I put them in the vase here, or like on my kitchen table, um, I have a gray wall. And um, if you know much about having like flowers or any kind of... All right, so here's the photograph that I took on my kitchen table with my flower arrangement from the flowers to my yard. Uh, my kitchen is gray, which is great for backdrop for any kind of photograph I'm going to take. Did you know that? Did you know that Cezanne's whole entire studio was all gray? Because he was a slow painter. Um, obviously, he painted oils back then. They were no acrylics, and um, so he wanted the light to be consistent. And because he was a very slow painter, so it's great to have a gray background. Um, obviously, it's a little brighter here. Um, I actually had this without any kind of light on the um, the flowers. I took it with my iPhone. And it kind of created more light, which is kind of wild, but it's kind of funny how it does that. So you see we have cornflowers, this latris, and phlox, and just regular daisies in here, um, and some black-eyed Susans in here, just like peeking through. So it's mostly like whites with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of pale purple thrown in, some purple thrown in, and of course greens, right? So when you're painting this, you're thinking bright green, such a chartreuse kind of green, which is like a bright yellow with just a little bit of blue to make that nice pop poppy green, like very bright, vibrant chartreuse green. We have a glass vase here. Um, some leaves I left on the table for interest. Um, so really the cornflower, corn flower, not cornflower, coneflower, um, is similar to a daisy except a, it's, Got this a center is really kind of thick and spiky and it hurts actually. And then you have the daisy kind of type leaf petals on the bottom. So you see the daisy kind of sticks up a little bit too, but not as much as the, the uh, cone flower does. So I'm gonna draw this, but it's not gonna be precise. You know, um, go take some, take some flowers from your yard and throw them in a little vase. Even if it's like this big, because your flowers are short, it's the best way to like look at and be observant to the florals around you and then draw them yourself, right? So you see, I'll draw a cylinder here for the vase, just going down here. Now it could be in the middle of the paper. It could be like off to the side. I'm kind of throwing it in the middle here. And if it's a cylinder, obviously you have two parallel lines, right? curve line here and then it's going to come back into an oval on the bottom. That's how it works. And we don't really see that oval. It can kind of, kind of gets fluctuated from the water dissipating in it. There's a water line here and then the flowers kind of start here on this bottom. And as I look at it, I kind of do like a circle thing like I talked about. Where are the big flowers going to go, right? You see the, the cone flower. I keep saying cone and corn. 
um, the, the top of it is here. And then we have the daisy type leaves, petals here. We see another cone flower. See the, the stem sticking out here. And how I draw that is, let me show you. So it's like a little top hat, right? It's a curve line here, a little top hat. And then we've got the petals. Just sketch those in. They don't have to be perfect. We have the stem kind of coming down. And then you see another daisy here, right? So a circle, oval kind of shape. And we won't see the petals looking exactly the same. You see them kind of cut off, so they're kind of foreshortened here because they've been chomped off. Maybe some. We had a storm, you know, kind of killed some of the petals. So I just kind of make a line that kind of curves, little wiggles, and kind of come back. Here we go again here. We have many tutorials on daisies and whatnot. And again, don't get bogged down in the details if it looks exactly how the photograph looks. So I'm just getting the feeling for it. Here's another daisy over here. Some four shortened petals and then some long ones back here. And little ones because remember in nature, it's not going to look the same. There's a black eyed Susan peeking through here. Maybe the petals are bigger over here. And, and you know, I don't care that it's not perfect. And here's that lat latris kind of flower. So I'm just kind of like squiggling in. It looks like spikes, right? It's kind of a rectangular kind of shape. It kind of goes down and in and just put little spikes on it. It will help if you draw your stuff. Um, I'm going to zoom in again. See my pencil here. So for the um, phlox, they're just, they're all, what, what, it's a five petal, little tiny five petal blooms kind of clustered together. One, two, three, four. And they're little centers, right? So you can just go like that, draw them. There's one that kind of peeking out. That's what you do. You kind of cluster them. And they will have, there's a way to paint them to have that kind of look. And here's another one over here, right? There is a daisy kind of peeking over this way, sideways daisy. So I'll go like this. I'm trying to do a little bit faster now. You can see the bending of the stem and it comes down. And in here, there's like another little peeking cone flower. And then of course, over the vase, you see some leaves triangle shaped type leaves, leaves that are coming down this way. By the way, you can keep your um, pencil marks or not keep them. There's that lattice kind of peeking through in here, spiky kind of flower and kind of on the bottom down here and there's more leaves kind of happening. See, I'm just kind of drawing out the leaves. Uh, I don't mind having some of the um, pencil lines, you know, and some of my paintings. It's kind of nice. So here we have that five petal flux. One, two, three, four, five. Just kind of wiggling it and not making it perfect. You could draw a five petal flower, right? I think you can. And then just keep drawing. There's a couple of little ones that are like on its side and some leaves. Just sketching that. Now, don't worry if you don't sketch in every little section that you see, right? And then, of course, the stems are all going to be kind of like in here, coming down. You can't see that so much. They're coming down, crossing over. You really want to have a, each flower have a stem. Here you kind of see them kind of hanging in here, kind of crisscrossing. This can kind of like really, the humidity or the leaves kind of mushing this whole area here which is fine. You can just kind of make the color kind of mushy and some leaves peeking through here. There was a little cone flower that hasn't been bloomed yet in here. Getting the stems. And again, I'm not making this perfect. Just kind of drawing what I see. I made the vase lines a little thick. I'll erase those. Now, at this point, there's many ways you can go about making this watercolor. You can just watercolor in from what you've drawn here. All right, here's some leaves I threw in. Um, and the table's round like here, but I'm going to do it this way. I don't want it to make it. I'm going to have to turn it on the side 
so I don't make it look like as I'm filming here <laughs> I could probably make it look not as even as I want so you maybe use a rule for this and of course because it's glass you can go right across to the other side right already I'm seeing that it's um, probably not straight so I'm gonna grab my little roller okay what I didn't mention in the beginning is that the paper I'm using is Arsh 100% cotton cold press this is the pad the loose pieces it's a lot cheaper than getting a block blocks are like three times the price in a pad how you can get fairly inexpensive I'm gonna use my Princeton 12 Neptune series it's a floppy kind of brush um, but I love it and I want to make a loose kind of painting here and I would start off painting the blooms first I wouldn't do the stems so necessarily first and I usually set with the center so here we have cadmium yellow deep right there's some green in that so and that little um, come flat but I'm gonna go pretty fast so um, I want to go around the paper pretty fast I'll kind of hit all the areas that are yellowish and then a little bit of green so I'll take some of this yellow over here I'll add some peacock blue to that make that bright kind of limey green right if I want it darker I'll grab some um, Prussian blue and grab a little bit of yellow yes you should clean your brush in between but heck and burnt umber I'll mix them together to get a little deeper green clean off my brush grab some more Prussian blue now I had a uh, tutorial on my patreon about water control people get confused about what butter and milk and cream mean but think of the actual product itself butter cream milk and when you're mixing up colors that's the consistency you're looking for right now when I'm mixing up this dark green over here you can kind of see it on the side um, the consistency is more like a cream so it's thick it won't bleed as much okay so clean up my brush really well because now I want to go just use it yellow and the, the cone flower has more of a yellow orange so grab the yellow and I might grab a little bit of cadmium red light and get the orange happening too even the cadmium yellow is pretty intense like a more of a not a bright yellow like a lime yellow so here I've got that yellowish orange color I'm just gonna go from wet on dry so paper is dry wet and I'll take the tip of my brush I'll just show you a few of these and then I'm just going to go ahead and start to paint a lot of them see just kind of hit that area and kind of spike out the little spikes you see kind of fill in the bottom you can go in and grab some of that green tap it in the bottom even darker green as you can see in the photograph that it has darker green happening oh, this photograph right here darker green happening but I'm not gonna paint exactly as you see like every little spike all that kind of stuff just gonna get the feel of it by adding a deep dark green here you can even grab the tip of your brush a little burnt umber a little brown kind of play around with that see it has the feel of it you don't have to go crazy now you see that any kind of white flower the petals will never be really white and the cast shadows the shadows that are casting on the flower the lighting all that nonsense will change the color of the petals and the petals that you see here in my picture will have a cast of even pink to them I mean I have bright rose here I have yellow I have all these colors and I kind of mix them up so it's kind of like a peachy color there's even like a green color so that white is going to have a tinge to it so I'm just grabbing some of that color and that's why the pencil lines kind of works for keeping although um, I do have this weird lines going across with this pencil line so I'm going to try and remove them if I can with my needed eraser kind of making it a little bit messy but really should have done that first <laughs> but here I'm going to add like pink and a little bit of yellow I can add a little bit of blue it's never going to be white white right there's a little bit of lime green in the outer petals kind of happening and I'm just tapping see how I'm just tippy tap with the tip of my brush you have to like dance on the page so here I'm going to start dancing around the page filling in 
the daisies really quickly. They all kind of have the same kind of color tone as the coneflower does in the center. I'll go around the paper and I'll see where all my yellows are and then see if there's a little puddle of water from, water from the watercolor. I'll remove it with my brush and tap it on a paper towel to get off all the excess. And again, because that green, I'll just tap in some of this green, grab some burnt umber, just little tippy taps to get that depth in there. So we've pretty much got a lot of the yellows in there except the um, Black Eyed Susans, which is more like a orangey yellow. We can kind of put some of those in. I'm just really kind of minimal water is happening on these petals. Just kind of putting those in real quick. They are yellow, but they're more orangey yellow. They look more orange than yellow. So I hit all my yellows first in this scenario. I'm adding a little more orangey tinge to this one. And then I'm going to go in and do the whites with the colors. Like say I have this is cast shadow because of these flocks have like purple tones to them that those petals over in these daisies will have a cast of purple. Same with this one, all that good stuff. So for purple, I'm going to mix bright rose with ultramarine blue for that purple pinky color. I'm going to put a first wash of that color in. There's a very dark color inside of here, but we're going to do the first wash like this. A little more pink actually. Taking the brush and just kind of wiggling it and putting little spikes on the outside edge. Just like that. Really simple. Again, you don't have to fuss too much with this stuff. One out here. And it's one peeking under the daisy. Boom. And for the phlox, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do for that real quick. And then we're going to get into painting it really fast because that's what I like to do. So it's just a super pale color, right? You can do it many ways. You can feel that pale purple pinky color in. I'm actually going to make it more pink with the bright rose. And then you can take a thick bright rose tap the center and have it kind of bleed out. See how it did that? Do it again. Fill in this little five petal flower with a really pale color, minimal water. See I'm kind of just going in here. Really, I'm actually even lighter than that. I can water it down. It's supposed to be really pale. Just tip tapping all that stuff. And I'll take the bright rose right from the tube and just tap the center and let that do its work. It's going to dissipate, Shh, but not too much because it's thick. You see how it's not doing too much? And then really in the center center, it's almost like black, but it's like a real deep purple. So ultramarine blue with the magenta or even like um, cap magenta or the rose. See, so here's the blue, here's magenta, and then go even just like one little teeny dot, blackish type dot in the center. And that's your flux, right? So now I'm just going to go real fast. I'm just going to go into these petals, adding some pinks and some yellows, greens. These are the daisies. A little bit of green kind of coming out here. This is the um, coneflower and the daisies. The daisy will have more pinky tone because it's cascading for the wonderful pinky purple tone from the wonderful little uh, lattice that is here. So I'm just really kind of moving in and throwing in some purples. And you say, well, how are you going to see them? But you can with the pencil lines. And down here, it's different. Different kind of colors hitting it. Pinks, greens, all that good stuff. You can even put a little bit of yellow kind of coming out too. 
and some blues. I know it seems kind of crazy that you can do that, but it does. It does have all those hues of all the cast shadows on those white petals. You just want to keep them light. Very, very light. And then you can kind of go around the edges of some of them. I'll add a little blues when they dry. Right now I'm just adding a little purple. So with that um, lattice, lattice, whatever you want to call it, got that one tone in there. I'll add another deeper tone with the ultramarine blue and magenta. It's like a blue pink and I can go inside here, the darker areas. You see, I'm getting that dark. Some darker areas kind of peeking through, kind of bleed that one. And on the bottom, just kind of tapping it. If it's just sitting there, you can kind of add some water to move it. Really, that's all you're doing. It's more of a pink purple than a purple. Purple, pink. Any more pink? Like that bright rose is perfect. Tap some of that pink color. And then for, like I said, for all those really sweet um, flux. It's such a pale petal, like pink. Mine are coming out purple. I have to get the rose back in here. I'll add a little rose with some cadmium red light so it comes up more pinky pinky color. Yeah, it's better. It does have like a pinky purple though. Depends on how you want to do it. Just going to fill that in. And then I can add the the center. Just a tap of a little dot. Really kind of simple. Again, we're just doing like a loose painting. You don't have to make this perfect. You grab your greens for the stems underneath them of these flocks. They're kind of going in here. See, I just hold my brush like this. And then going in here and just taking the tip of it and making those little green stems. Then you can start to add some of the greenery now. Same thing over here, it's kind of peeking through. Right now you're seeing the green peeking through from the daisy. And of course, this wonderful daisy here, kind of coming down. So now we're gonna go down into this area here. We're just gonna go fast with all this. With the stems I'll add the first like wash of like bright light green you can start to play with some darker greens going in here there's mostly the light, light greens though and the medium to dark dark green will be in this like triangle shape leaf and this one I find if you go fast with a really loose brush don't think about it too much when you're painting your flowers you'll have a much better outcome if you want this really kind of pretty loose wildflower look. If you're thinking about it too much and you're just going about every single stem and everything you want to paint, it will not have that look. See, I'm just kind of filling in these areas around the blooms, doing the little leaves that come out. There's a stem kind of coming here, as you can see, some little greenery, and there's a lot more. It's very kind of a lot of air happening in between but you still have some like greens going in between it as well and many different colors. So we've got that bright chartreuse green happening and a medium green. And in this section, I'm just gonna fill it in a little bit more. Just tapping that little cone flower that is not bloomed yet and there's some lighter greens under here, just kind of happening, whatnot. And then we have there's some, like there's that bright chartreuse in this one that's kind of diffused here. There's a big stem coming down here. And we've got kind of a brownish one in here. And a bunch of light ones kind of going on the side. And they'll be diffused. I'll kind of diffuse them more, but just kind of putting them all in there like that. 
Okay, no little greens. See, now it's coming to life, right? <laughs> there wasn't much green up here, but I can just kind of wiggle this and kind of manipulate it a little bit. Now, this is also a great design you could do if you want to do ink and wash. And remember, all the greens can't be one note. So I'm going to go back in with my Prussian blue and my Cabernet Yellow Deep and some Burnt Umber. Make like a much deeper green and kind of go in here and get into some of these areas that would be darker. You see some of the greens kind of peeking through around some of the stems. What not. They're not everywhere, but they're somewhere. Just gives it more life. Just gonna go in here, add some depth with this dark green. Like I said, it's not exact like the picture. That's good enough. Okay. Cleaning up my stuff. Now I'm gonna go in and really start to hone down. I'm actually gonna put my leaves down here too in the bottom. I can paint those too. Just simple. Pushing down your brush, kind of twisting it, and we got some leaves there. I'm gonna hone in on the flowers and give them some more depth. And I'll just show you a few what I mean. Like this daisy here. Now that it's dry, I'll go back in and I'll go in the bottom area and I'll make this a little bit darker. Center a little bit, gives it some more depth. Same thing with the Black Eyed Susans. And then I'll have to do something with those daisy um, petals because you can still can't tell, right? They're kind of very, very soft and light. And we'll have to go and kind of go around some of them. I'm gonna go back in here and little spikes with this deeper color with the tip of my brush and add this yellow really kind of thick for the daisy you see it dries lighter so which is why I'm saying when you do the daisy petals you don't have to get precise so now we can just take maybe like uh, ultramarine blue maybe mix with a little paints gray just a teeny bit same brush you can use the same brush and we'll start to play around with this petal here like going on the edge of it get some more depth right you can grab even just some green you're kind of outlining now the petals so you can see them and it might not be perfect where you see exactly the color but you get the idea I might fill in this more with pink or blush tones see or even yellows kind of hitting that white and kind of go around the edge of those petals. This is just how I would create it with the white daisy. I can go in down here and just kind of hit the one side. You can still see it. Grab some of the blue grays, giving it some shadow depth from the center outwards. See, now I've gotten a little bit darker on the inside part. Still using this tip to my advantage. I'm kind of outlining the petals. Same thing here. I'll outline it on one side. And now you can see the petals more. Before you couldn't, and now you can. Right? See, I'm grabbing a little gray. Just a little gray tone, kind of outlining some of them. Not every one of them, but the ones that seem important. So I'll go in here and do the same thing. Just taking a little bit of gray, going around some of the edges of those daisies and then kind of wishing it towards the center. And that's what you'll see. And they'll start to kind of kind of come alive by doing the, this just on the edges. If this brush is too intimidating for you, use a smaller brush. But I like to play around with big brushes for this kind of area. Would you see how this one particular this daisy right here. You just take your time. Now I'm going to tap in a little more color. And now it's really starting to come to life. The photograph's not showing it, that color, but we're going to 
<laughs> take our artistic liberty so you can see it. If you want to add a little more blue, do that. So you've got to be able to see the petals. See, a little more blue to these ones. Now you know it's a white comb flower. See, I'm just taking the tip, adding a little blue. There's multi colors in this, but that's what makes it sweet and different. And that's what I like to do. Um, you don't have to do this. Not your choosing, that's fine. So that's how you go about that. Take your time, go around. It can be some gray, you can go back in and add some pinks, yellows, see? different colors and going in here. But now you can see the outline of the petals. And that makes for a better flower. Um, with the little plucks, you can kind of outline a little bit if you want to, but they're pretty much filled in. All right, and then for the jar of glass. So this is where the fun part comes in, right? There's a lot of grays happening, blues and grays. I'm watering down some paints gray here and some greens. So there's a mush right here. I'm not gonna concentrate on this mush part. I'm just gonna kind of make my grays happen. Go across, right? Kind of loosely stick the water down with gray. Here, it's not really gray because the gray is from the table really, but the water, you can add some blue or even peacock blue, like some ultra, like a real turquoise color if you want. So peacock blue with some yellow, make turquoise. You can play around with adding that. Like I said, this is your design. Just because you have a photograph doesn't mean you have to follow it to a T. So I'm mixing up a turquoise color. Kind of putting that in there too for the water line. See how I'm painting right over those stems? Now I would leave, there is like a white halo here. So I, I, in hindsight, maybe I would have left um, masking fluid or something, but hey, now you can always use white gouache, right? So I'm gonna grab some grays and just kind of go around here, the cylinder. There's a very white, kind of white kind of tone here, dark here. And whatever color you're gonna put the, the table in, you kind of have to go across into the glass. So right now I'm just gonna do the glass itself like that. I'll add some grays to the side here, the edge of the glass, get a little bit darker in some areas. Just taking the tip of my brush, grab some paints gray. Getting a little darker, as you can see, and then a little bit down below. Not gonna fuss with it too much. When you fuss too much, it doesn't look like glass anymore. It's overworked. I'm gonna put a little line up here on the top. Okay, for the background, I have to choose what kind of table color I want. Maybe I'd make it gray. Like I said, Matisse did a lot of grays. It was great for him. Um, choose what color. And also, I remember I had the Black Eyed Susan. I didn't do the black. Just take paints gray for the Black Eyed Susan. Fill that in. Simple as that. You might leave a little white. Mine's a little wet here. And you know it's a Black Eyed Susan. Put this in back out. See, very light, pretty as it is. But we can go back in and add our grays for the, the table area, or you want to put in the background that would really be able to enhance the flowers, right? I'll take away some of these colors. You see on my palette. So you could put background, you cannot put background. It's up to you. Um, I don't know if I want to put background because I feel like I might screw it up. <laughs> but, you know, the table was covering this part, which is what made this part gray, right? So maybe we'd have to do that. This is where you're like, hmm, well, you screwed up. I don't know. I think I'm just going to do the table. Gray. I'm not sure if I want to do that. So then it would get darker gray here. And so you wouldn't have had so much gray here, but that's okay. I'm going to just fill this in with my big old 12. Get the color in here. Go over the leaves. This is a loose tutorial. 
Now it would be, I made it darker on this side in the photograph, it's lighter on this side, so I have to get darker on that side. Much darker. It's very, very wet. And again, you don't have to paint the whole darn table. Just whatever want, areas you want. So I'm going to fill this in next to the leaves. This is feel like a medium gray on this side. I could try and lift it if I wanted to make it a little bit lighter. And by lifting, you're taking the paint and removing it by tapping it back on the paper towel. So here I'm, it's called lifting. You're lifting up the paint and you're like mopping it basically. Mop, lifting is like mopping. And now I'm gonna get a little darker on this side. See that? Now you're gonna to have to show some of this in the cylinder. So I'm gonna go in here, kind of darken this up a little bit. And in here in the water, the line of where the table is. Kind of darken this a little bit. See? So it makes sense. Like it goes right through because you can see it's glass, right? Remember I said I got this kind of dark up here, but that's okay, we can make it more like water. I'm gonna add some more turquoise, kind of wiggle the paint, which means you're moving it, removing it, right? So you're diffusing the, the um, stems a little bit. You can even use a paper towel to try and move it. I'm gonna remove some of this color watering it down and just lifting it up. Diffusing it by just mushing it. And then just like going like that. Looks like my glass, right? So that's how you go about doing something. If you picked it in the yard, I wait till this dries. I can do a little simple shadow. Um, under my leaves, I'll wait, you know, obviously it dries. I have a little splatter here, so I'll just clean it up real quick. How you do that? You get that wet real fast, take a paper towel and lift, lift again. You see, this is how I go about painting a design from a floor arrangement. I'm going to go back in here, add a little bit more turquoise. That's a little too bright, but I'll diffuse it so it looks like water kind of happening in the glass. Then just this gray, right? Looks much better for that. And a couple of dark grays here and there, like on the edge of the glass with my tip of my brush. See, I'm getting a little bit darker where the water line is and in between some of these blue, uh, stems and up here and then down where the oval is in the glass. It just would help a little bit more enhance your glass. And there were some crisscross stems happening. I'm gonna water that down. I didn't put in. Now that it's wet, it helps diffuse it. I'm gonna put those in. Diffusing more stems. And if it doesn't look exactly like the photograph, so what? It doesn't really matter, does it? I don't like that my line right here is kind of thick. You know, when people say, what would you change? I would change that. It feels a little too thick. Could I diffuse it? I could. Get it wet, tap it a little bit. Let's see, then go back in and add my my diffuse stems and change it up a little bit. See, as I'm talking to you, I'm hoping that dries. <laughs> so once I dry this up, I go in and I'll, a little shadow. I'll kind of go from here, the center, outward. Nothing too insane, just a little shadow. You can add some like little 
stems coming, kind of mimic like the flowers, what the flowers are doing. And then kind of go like that next to the glass. And then for the leaves, just a little shadow underneath them. A little bit darker, obviously gray, right? I always want to go from the with the glass cylinder in the center outward for the shadow, right? Simple as that. And add a few little dark again. Now for that glass um, halo, I just take some white gouache. Got to clean up my brush really well here, or I can use just like a Princeton eight long round for this this part. Um, grab some white gouache, which I have here. Loosen it up, and we'll use that for our little highlight. Like I said, you can always masking fluid this out. Do little highlights if you missed it up. And there we go. There is our little um, wildflowers from my garden tutorial. And this will kind of um, dissipate a little bit because um, it's not, I mean, I watered it down a little bit. If I didn't, the, the gouache would be real intense. So I don't want to make it too intense. But that's how you go about like painting a daisy, you know. I, I don't have to show all the intricacies of like the color petals and all that stuff. I've added many colors in here, as you can see. If you really want them to pop, you would put the background in here. I could have washed it in a like nice bluish gray too. I was thinking about it, but I didn't. But anyway, that is my wildflower vase <laughs> of my um, flowers in my garden. <laughs> I can't even speak today. <laughs> anyway. I hope it was fun to watch me do this and how I dissect it and how I would create something like this. And then you just go about yourself. Like, you know, don't don't get so bogged down in like super details, making it loose. I kind of filled in some of these with white, you know, pink colors and whatnot. And that's that. All right, guys, thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I hope you enjoyed your day. And it's nice and sunny where you are. It's a little rainy where I am, but I picked my flowers before it started to rain. Take care and have a great day and I'll speak to you soon.